fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one the half that these people have to say. Wheaties, oh, Wheaties, and do an okay. Okay. Oh, man, get it! This is the Lone Ranger telling you that's a mighty popular call out here in the West. At roundup time, you'll hear it on many a ranch at the first streaks of dawn. And you should see those long-legged cowboys roll out of the blankets and head for the chuck wagon. They've got a full back-breaking day in the saddle ahead of them, and they know what they need. A good, substantial breakfast. One that will stick to their ribs and really keep them feeling and doing okay. Take a tip from the folks out west. Keep on eating your wheaties and you'll be doing okay. Okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll Silver. Hooray! Along the upper reaches of the Rio Grande River, where it formed the boundary between the United States and the northernmost Mexican state of Chihuahua, a large band of renegades composed of army deserters and fugitives from the law of both countries conducted sudden and vicious raids across the border with great frequency. Under the leadership of a renegade officer of the Mexican army, Pancho Hanos, the band grew to such proportions it was finally known as the Fugitive Army. Reports poured in to military headquarters of attacks on towns, of raids on herds of cattle and horses, and of cash shipments stolen from stagecoaches. The commanding officer at Fort Leeton on the Texas bank of the Rio Grande paced the floor of his headquarters one morning as he talked to his adjutant. Captain Quincy, the situation is very serious. The so-called fugitive army is a growing menace to the West. That's true, Colonel Melbank. It's also a menace to the peace and security of the Mexican state of Chihuahua across the river. I understand Pancho Hanos, the leader, has both Mexicans and Americans under his command. Yes, that's true. <coughs> Captain, we've been on the defensive long enough. The time has come for us to take the offensive. What do you plan to do, sir? I've decided to send a dispatch rider to the military governor of Chihuahua, asking his cooperation and requesting permission for our troops to enter his territory to join with his soldiers in a search for the fugitive army. At his stronghold in the foothills a few miles south of the border, Pancho Hanos twirled his handlebar mustache as he talked to two of his men, both tough American outlaws, Slug Norton and Gil Hooker. It is time, amigos, for you to cross the border and do some more snooping, eh? Sure, if you say so, Pancho. Yeah, I'm willing. But when do you intend to go through with your big plan, Pancho, to take over the state of Chihuahua? The time has not yet come for that, Senor Gil. If you wait too long, maybe the Mexican army will send more troops up from Mexico City. Then you'll have plenty of trouble on your hands. It is a long and difficult journey from Mexico City to Chihuahua, amigo. And so far... We have confined our operations to attacks across the border so as not to arouse my countrymen too much. Soon I shall be the governor, the ruler of the state of Chihuahua. Sure, sure. Let's go, Gil. Right. We'll be back as soon as we turn up something, Pancho. Bueno, I shall be waiting. Adios. Oh, bye. Oh. 
Later, the two outlaws rode the trail toward the border. Gill was saying, You know, Slug, I don't like the way Poncho always keeps saying what'll happen to us if we double-cross him. We gotta take it, Gill. We're both wanted for murder in the States. And he's got spies there we don't even know about. Yeah, that's right. Hey, here comes somebody over the hill yonder. Right into the gully out of sight till we see who he is. Get up there. Get Come up, on. Get up. Oh, oh, oh. oh. United States troop. He may be carrying papers we want to read. That trail leads to the state capitol. Maybe we better stop him and find out. Well, there's no use showing ourselves. We'll plug him and then search him. He's not coming this way for any good. He'll be passing in a minute. I'll use my gun. Here goes. You hit him. He fell out of the saddle. Come on. Up now. Come on. Come on. Up. Come on. Easy now. Up. Get up there. Come, Come on. on. Get it. Oh, 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 yeah, here's the dispatch in his pocket. Addressed to the governor. We'll take it back to Poncho. You better make sure he's dead. Then we'll bury him. Hey, somebody coming. Now let's get away from here quick before they come around the bend. Come on. Steady, boy. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. The two men disappeared over the hill just as a rider came around the bend. A Mexican woman who stopped beside the fallen dispatch rider and quickly dismounted. Whoa, 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 steady. She found the man wounded but conscious. She used a scarf to bandage his wound, and by the time she was finished, he lost consciousness. She dragged him into the shade of the nearby mugway plants, then mounted and headed for the border bridge to report to the guard. Get up! Under it! A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who had crossed the border into Mexico to search for the Renegade Army's stronghold, rode along the trail on their return trip. As they approached a bend, they saw a riderless horse grazing nearby. They secured the horse, then followed its tracks to find its rider. After rounding the bend in the trail, they came to the place where the dispatch rider had fallen. The Lone Ranger and Tonto pulled to a halt. Oh, oh, oh easy, oh, big fella. Oh, easy, Scott. Mark, show horse. Break stride here. Others ride from gully. And look there, blood spots. The marks of a body having been dragged to the left. Come on. Me see body yonder. Under big mobway plant. A trooper. <coughs> He's alive, Tonto. And somebody dressed his wound. A silk scarf was used as a bandage. I... I have to go on. I... I... That mask. Maybe you and, and the Indian. We're not outlaws, soldier. We're here to help you. We found your horse along the trail. You're not able to ride right now, so we'll make camp on the slope until you're stronger. And we'll take you back to the fort. Uh, the, the dispatch. Uh, uh, oh. He's fainted, Tonto. You need care for a while. Let's get him to a camp right now. Uh -huh. Later, the dispatch rider regained some strength, and after learning the masked man's identity, told about the missing dispatch. The Lone Ranger and Tonto helped him to his horse, and the three men started back toward the border to report to the fort. Suddenly, as they rounded a bend... Stop your horses and race! Hold on, hold on, Keep those two men covered. They're outlaws. There, Capitan. That is the wounded man I have tell you about. Most likely those two men shot him, then came back. Wait, Captain. I, 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 oh. He's fainted. Catch him. We got him. We'll lift him from the cell. Yeah, we'll take the wounded man back to the fort. As for the masked man and Indian, we'll turn them over to the Mexican authorities at the border. They'll face a firing squad as members of the fugitive army. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Hi. What tastes really good when the weather's hot? I'll tell you what. An ice cream pie made with your favorite ice cream and Betty Crocker white cake mix. It's easy as pie to make. All Mom has to do is add water and the whites of two fresh eggs. Then beat and bake. Even if you've never baked a cake before, you'll turn out a high, light white cake the first time. Then, just before serving, spread one layer with your favorite ice cream and cut in wedges. And remember, the same high-quality ingredients your mom would choose herself are right in the package, 
Ingredients like famous softest silk flour and pure vegetable shortening. What's more, with all her mixes, Betty Crocker guarantees you a perfect cake every time you bake. Perfect or write General Mills, Minneapolis for your money back. So kids, ask mother to make a cool, refreshing ice cream pie. It's easy with Betty Crocker White Cake Mix. Now to continue. Two of the troopers lifted the wounded man from his horse. The others closed in on the Lone Ranger and Toto with menacing guns. Captain, we are not laws. We help the wounded man. He insisted that he must return to the fort to make a report. Though we realized he was in a weakened condition. Never mind the talk, mister. We'll unmask and disarm you. Captain. Captain. A masked man. He's a friend. The Lone Ranger. uh, Oh. Once more, he has fainted. Yes, but he came too long enough to make a statement. Is what he said true? You're the Lone Ranger? Yes, Captain. Your papers will positively identify me. Never mind. I'll take your word for it. Men, the masked man and Indian are friends. I'm sorry I was so hasty. I understand the rider was carrying an important dispatch. Yes, to the governor of Chihuahua. He must have been shot and robbed by members of the fugitive army. They have spies everywhere. Anyone who leaves the fort and comes this way is taking a risk. Especially if he wears a trooper's uniform. I doubt if anyone can get through to the governor. They know now what's in that dispatch. My Indian friend can follow the trail of the men who shot the rider and find out where the stronghold is. Meantime, I have an idea. If a Mexican were to go to the governor, I... I don't know any Mexican who'd risk the trip, though it isn't more than 50 miles. They're all afraid of the renegades. Senor Capitan, I would go. But it is not usual for a woman to travel alone in this country. I appreciate your willingness, Senorita, even though it isn't possible to send you. Uh, By the way, this is Senorita Ramona Valdez. She bravely brought us news of the wounded rider. Senorita? Many times I have heard of the masked man who rides north of the border to help the people. I am most proud to meet you, senor. Oh, thank you. Hmm. Captain, I have the answer. If Ramon is willing, I'll disguise myself as a Mexican. Then we'll ride together to the governor. See, si, see. Si. No one would bother a Mexican couple who travel the trail. It is a good idea, senor. And I am most willing to go with you. By thunder, that is the answer. We'll return to the fort now with the wounded man. It's just a short distance. Mister, I'll meet you at the border with the new dispatch. Good. Have Ramona wait at the border for me. I'll meet her there. Meanwhile, Tala will trail the renegades and report to you about the location of the stronghold. Later, Ramona waited just outside the small inspection building at the United States end of the bridge. A customs official stood nearby. Ramona acted the part of an impatient wife. Oh, that lazy husband of mine. Always he's late. There comes a rider now on the white horse. See, that is Carlos. All our pesos he spends on that horse and the fancy saddle. He imagines he is the great caballero. Hold, hold, hold up. Here. Here. Name, please. Name. Ha. He is the great Carlos Valdez who lets his wife wait. You must not get excited, Ramon. I... Ha. Do not waste the time. Show the man the paper for us to enter the United States. I am tired of waiting. See, si, si, Ramon. Now, let me see it. Hold on, this is the wrong paper. Where's your entry permit? Caramba, I bring the wrong paper. Come inside, you. I want to ask a few questions. As the guard and the Lone Ranger entered the inspection building, the captain, who was waiting inside, stepped forward. This Mexican. Why have you brought him inside, guard? I was to meet you here, Captain. You? (laughs) Well, that disguise is perfect. But I'd know your voice anywhere. What if you have to speak? Oh, don't worry, Senor Capitan. What? The dispatch will be safe with me. Wonderful. <laughs> Here it is. Good luck. Thanks, Captain. I'll join Ramona and get back as soon as possible. Good. Guard, take him outside. And follow the instructions I gave you in case a renegade spy is nearby. Yes, sir. Sorry, but I can't let you into the States. Go back across the bridge to the Mexican inspection building. Get the proper entry permit for you and your wife. Si, si, senor. Ramon, I am so sorry, oh, but... You are one big fool. Much of her to let us go. Please, stay. <coughs> Under there. Meantime, Toto followed the trail of Slug and Gill. 
From a high mesa, he saw the fugitive army, consisting of about 300 men. He rode to the fort and reported to the colonel, giving the location of the valley. He also brought a message from the Lone Ranger, suggesting that the troopers cross the Rio Grande in small groups during the night and gather in La Rosa Valley, where they were to wait for the arrival of the masked man with the Mexican soldiers sent by the governor. When the colonel heard the Lone Ranger's plan, he exclaimed, Hey, Thunder, I'm risking my career, but I'll take the chance. Captain, brief them in. Give them definite instructions. Yes, sir. This maneuver must be carried out with the utmost secrecy. All during the night, small groups of troopers secretly made the trip across the Rio Grande without detection. The following morning, the entire company was gathered in La Rosa Valley on Mexican soil. Tonto left to meet the Lone Ranger and the Mexican soldiers. Meanwhile, Slug and Gill, who had started for the States, hurriedly returned to the stronghold. Ho, 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 ho. Soon, amigos. You've been riding hard. Yeah. And we got some real news, Pancho. Oh? Gil and I went to the place along the Rio Grande where we usually cross, and we saw hoof marks of horses leading into Mexico. So, figuring an outlaw gang might have crossed during the night and hoping we might get them as recruits, we followed the track. Yeah. And when we reached a ridge overlooking La Rosa Valley, we saw a whole company of United States troopers camped there. What? They must have sneaked across during the night. Oh. They would surprise Pancho, eh? How many are there? A couple of hundred or so. Ah. We shall show them we are not to be taken lightly. We will go to the valley and take them by surprise. They have no right to be on this soil. The people of Chihuahua State will look upon us as deliverers when we pass out the word that gringo troopers come for no good purpose. We will ride to La Rosa Valley at once. At La Rosa Valley, guards were posted at either end, but troopers, believing their location was unknown to anyone, were taken by surprise and momentarily thrown into confusion when the renegades suddenly appeared over one of the ridges and rode down the slope, firing as they came. Let me slide, me! Why, it will! The troopers quickly rallied and fought back gallantly, but Poncho and his men were pushing their advantage to the utmost. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger, still in disguise, rode with the Mexican soldiers and the governor, who was also military leader of the northern Mexican forces. Ramona rode with them, with the intention of turning off when they neared her home. Suddenly, she pointed, saying, Look, senor, a horseman, he is coming fast. It's my friend, Toto. A few minutes later, Toto swung alongside of the Lone Ranger and rode along as he made his report. When he finished, the governor spoke. Having the United States cavalry waiting in the valley will save time and fool the renegades. With a fine idea, senor. I was sure you wouldn't object, governor. Of course not. The colonel will take the permission paper back with him, so there will be no questions asked. The stronghold, senor Indian, is it far from the valley? Maybe mile, maybe less. Good. This time we shall have the showdown with Pancho Hanos. Are we soon there? Stronghold beyond Mesa. We see to left. We turn off to La Rosa Valley soon. Bueno, bueno. I am most anxious to... Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, 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 oh. 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 shooting in the direction of La Rosa Valley. Something went wrong. We are right on the double. Forward! 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 Get up! Get up! Valley, the troopers were barely holding their own against Pancho's fugitive army. We can't hold out, Colonel. They'll get the best of us. We'll fight for the last man. Good work, men. Keep firing. Make every shot, Pancho. Though the situation appeared hopeless, the Colonel urged his men to greater effort. Suddenly, he looked up at the top of the ridge over which the renegades had come. He saw more horsemen appear. Nothing we lost. They have more men coming over the ridge behind them. Wait, Colonel. Look, that big white horse. The Mexican troops, they've arrived. They're closing in behind Pancho's men. Now the troopers, Captain, have to keep their sound to charge. Yes, sir. Stupid! Sound to charge! In a short time, the tide of the battle turned. Pancho and his men were badly beaten, and those who were not wounded or killed were finally rounded up, disarmed, and put under guard. 
The Lone Ranger, the Colonel, the Governor, and others discuss the outcome. Governor, you and your soldiers arrived just in the nick of time. Poncho and his men turned the tables on us and took us by surprise. Your friend on the white horse is the one to thank, Colonel. But for him, we would not be here. Oh, oh, now, oh. We owe thanks to Senorita Valdez for the part she played, Governor. She's a brave woman. And you, Senor, are a brave man. Evidently, Pancho's spies along the trail thought you were man and wife. Ah, but it is not so, Senor. I felt quite proud riding with so handsome a caballero. But I am still a senorita. Well, uh, thanks again for your help, Ramona. We'll say adios now. Father and I have business elsewhere after I remove this disguise. Adios, everybody. We'll see you again sometime. Adios, adios. You you scared him away, senorita. I? But am I not good to look at, senor colonel? Very much so. The bad man who usually wears a mask has dedicated his life to helping people and fighting lawlessness. You say he usually wears the mask, senor? I do not understand. As you know, he was disguised as one of your countrymen just now. But when not disguised, he always wears a black mask. You see, in our country, he's known as the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.